So welcome again uh, to part two of this uh, crowd workshop. Uh, first, we'll do some quick animation cycles, then we'll set up our agents and send everything to the crowd uh, dynamics, and we'll explore some forces that we can use with uh, the crowds. So here, now that I got my bat rig here, uh, it's a HDA, so if I was to search for the bat rig, here it is. Um, again, it's shareable, so you can install it somewhere uh, meaningful on your... Uh, on your uh, network, share it with other people. So what I like to do here is just keep a version of this rig uh, called rest. So it'll be like a rest position, a simple non-moving uh, agent. And then I can get a new bat rig here and I'll call it fast fly cycle. So what I wanna do is just different animations for our crowd, uh, crowd solver. So here, a fast fly cycle. And I can start animating all of this. So just make sure that here, our, um, our HD is not selectable. So check this. And same thing within the, with, within the rig itself. Uh, make sure to disable all these selectable flag to objects that we don't need to select. For example, the geometry or the bones. We only want to select the, the actual controllers. So here, I'll start the animation process. So selecting our controllers, I'll do a first uh, animation pass. So the K key will let you uh, put down keys <laughs> on, the, on the timeline. And I'll do something rather fast. So let's say maybe eight, eight frames. So if we take a look at bats flying around, they're flapping their wings pretty fast. Uh, but we can adjust this uh, animation uh, once we're uh, in the crowd solver. But I'll just do a quick animation here. So I, I changed here my, my timeline with only the, the bottom part here. So it's my, it's like, uh, you know the difference between frame end or frame start and then reference frame end and reference frame start, uh, yeah, end. Uh, so all the, the timeline options are here. So I, I'm keeping my scene timeline or my global animation timeline to uh, 1 to 240. But just for the sake of viewing here, um, I just want to view this eight frames. So if I press play here, of course, there is no animation. Uh, but I'll do some quick keyframes. So here, if I press key, uh, it'll, it'll create a, a, a key on all the parameters. But I can select, for example, Auto change, uh, uh, auto key changes only, and now it'll pr it'll put down only keys on the parameters that uh, that were updated. So, like this, and if I view this, this is great. Uh, this will be my fast fly cycle, but let's just take a look at uh, the animation editor for to see uh, some options that we, we can have with, with it. So I selected all my keys, pressed F to frame the view. And we can see here some, some tools that we can also find uh, right here. So by default, it'll select all, all the, 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 all the uh, within the, the channel list here. It'll select everything that was keyed. So I just want this fly cycle here. I can see that I, uh, I got 45 channels which uh, 18 of them are keyed. Like this, we can see the, the channel list. So I could maybe just select these uh, with the keyframes, press I to isolate them, and I could even create a uh, channel group. So from this selection, I could here create a group. And this, uh, these groups are, are global, uh, like they're, they are scene-wide. So I could call this one uh, fast uh, wing rotation, for example. So those are uh, the channels that I need for my rotation for this fly, uh, fast fly cycle. So from here, what I want to do is just to adjust. Uh, I mean, this, this one is pretty fast, but uh, let's say we're uh, working on a, a more complex uh, animation cycle. I would like to, to see if uh, this is cycling properly. So if I 
select all of this and right click and see the, the channel properties. So on these, they were already cycled, but I, I, I still want to show you how, geez, how we could cycle the animation. Great. So we're back. The animation editor is right here and should be able to get these keys here. Right click channel property. Yay. And then uh, select all of these boxes here. So with shift, you can group select all of these. And uh, so by default, it's set to uh, default. <laughs> and you can change it to cycle. And once you select this, you'll see that the main animation here is there. You can see that the opaque lines uh, with all your keys. And then these dotted lines are the cycle. So then you can adjust the ins and outs of your the, the way your, your handles are placed. So uh, you're good to go and things are cycling properly. So here we can see that I put some, uh, some more love into the animation. There, there are some offsets for each uh, each uh, channel, and if we play this back, oh, look at this. This is great. This is probably the, the best animation that I did uh, in my entire life, so <laughs> pretty proud, pretty proud. Great, so uh, we got these two here. Uh, I'll get this uh, bat again, call it rest, and we don't want these to be selectable. Great. Now it's time to set up the agents. So just just a quick overview of what are, what are agents. So basically, they are packed primitives. Uh, they are called packed agents, so they're slightly different. If you don't know what packed, uh, packed primitives are, it's uh, let's think about a, an optimized way to handle geometries in Houdini, where a lot of attributes are, in this case, they're, they're called intrinsic attributes. So a lot of them are hidden to the, to the user, but it's all there. You, we, can, uh, uh, we can definitely, definitely uh, play with the, these parameters. And uh, it does a lot of clever stuff with the crowd solver later on. So we'll just set up a crowd agent. So here, the crowd shelf tool. We'll select our bat rig here, the rest position, and press agent here. So it already selected our, our source here. So it could even be a, uh, either be a uh, FBX or a character rig. So if you're animating in another software, which I doubt, I mean, you're probably all doing your animation uh, and rigging in Houdini, but if by any chance you, you exported uh, an FBX from another software, that's where you'll, you'll want to import it. And maybe just change the agent name to something like bat and the clip name. Uh, so it's now, now uh, Houdini is asking us how do we want to call this clip. So uh, it's the name of the animation cycle. Here we'll call it rest again. It's just, I think, a good practice to uh, keep the same name for these um, these HDAs or the, the name of the animation cycle would be the same as the clip name. And it creates this geo node, which inside we can see uh, the agent. So it was already named bat. Uh, the character rig was set up properly, the, the clip name as well. So many options here, it's great. Uh, but our problem, we got a problem here that uh, we can see all the controllers. So it might be a good idea here to, to hide the bones and controllers before setting up the agents, but it's not too late. It should reload properly. So I'll just select, let's see this, right. So we don't have the controllers. Uh, but we only got one animation clip, right? So here with the agent clip, we can load some more. Uh, we'll set this to three and we'll get the slow and fast fly cycle. So here, character rig, I'll get the uh, fast one. Let's call it fast. Nope, not fats. <laughs> fast. And the slow one. No typos. Yay. Great. So now if I middle click on this, I'll still get one packed agent. But if I take a look at the intrinsic attributes, not this one here, here. So intrinsic attributes are uh, stored with uh, the, the primitives here. And if I take a look at intrinsic, I can see uh, agent clip 
catalog. So here I can see all the, the clips that were loaded inside uh, this, uh, this agent definition. So I got the fast, the rest, and the slow animation clip. We're good. If I want, I can uh, display or show uh, a certain clip. So by selecting here up there, current clip, uh, the rest clip is uh, not animated. But if I select fast and I press play, great. It only took the, 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 the animation. Um, I can set the animation uh, frame range here. So from one to, I think I, I animated up to six, and the other one up to, I can't remember, something like 13. So here you can set your ins and outs of the, the, the animation. Uh, if you're importing an FBX, I think it's, um, it's looking at the, the, the animation length of the FBX. Uh, so depending on the keyframes that you've put there, uh, but you can always edit uh, here, so it should be good. And if you're importing an FBX, uh, it'll let you resize, or I think it's when you have this FBX here, convert unit. Uh, so if you're coming from Maya, for example, it's 100 times too big. Uh, so this would uh, leave your FBX as is, but within the, the crowd or the agent definition, we'll scale it back to uh, one unit, uh, one meters for Houdini. So let's back to our character rig. Great. Once everything's set up, it's a good idea to write these to uh, the uh, write the agent definition to disk. So just pressing save to disk. This is, I think, a new workflow from 17.5, uh, but it's great. Basically, it's just uh, the wrap network here with the, the agent wrap there. But everything's wired. It's kept in SOP, and we like it this way. Thank you. Uh, so writing this to disk. Uh, I've, I already did that earlier, but uh, let's call it uh, live demo, and this should be good. I'll save this to disk and load it back. And here, for our, for example, here the agent prep is not necessary, but you could adjust your uh, your agent further on. You could add layers, for example, if you got uh, if you wanted to have different hats on your bats, that that will be where you you'll want to do it. So I think it's called agent layer here. So these nodes are really useful to set up your different agents. From there, if you want to start uh, the actual dynamics of this, you'll need to first uh, do a crowdsource. So you, you'll need to source all your, your crowds on a point cloud, for example. So here we'll get this uh, populate shelf tool. So basically what it does, now select terrain, don't have any terrain. So what it does is it, it creates this uh, crowd source here. Let's take a look. This crowd source node. So by default, I think it's a thousand agents. Remember, eight gigs of RAM. It plays. I wonder if it's real time. Let's see. Uh, no, here. Not quite. But I mean, I got thousand agents. It's playing back quite nicely, and uh, nothing is moving. At, at this point, it's just uh, SOPs. I mean, it's, uh, it's object merging the agent that we set up in the other contexts. Then with this crowdsource here, it gathers points on a grid. If you prefer, you could, for example, do your own uh, point cloud. So here, I'll get the, the pighead, because pighead, and uh, scatter some points, maybe last points, and ta-da, I got uh, my, my bats on the, on the pig end. But here, they are all using the same animation clip and at the same time. So there are plenty of great randomized options here. So maybe randomize the clip time, render, uh, randomize the scale as well. Uh, but you can also play with attributes. If you want, you could uh, set a p-scale attribute on your points, and the crowdsource uh, will understand. And again, the crowdsource here, here is an open asset, so you can unlock it and uh, see all the shenanigans that is happening there and tweak it the way you want. Uh, but I think it, there's a, a good, good amount of randomizing that you, you get out of the box here. Uh, if we were to have different agents, so right now we only have one character, but if I had uh, different modelings, different rigs, I could also uh, randomize the initial state here. So I, I could merge many agents uh, on the left and then uh, wear, uh, wear them here. 
uh, and it should work just out of the box like this. Uh, right now it's a rather simple thing, but again, I mean, it's looking pretty nice. It's uh, packed agent, so it's pretty lightweight. Uh, I only got 100, remember, eight gigs of RAM. Uh, but later on, we'll see that all of this can move with, uh, with the uh, dynamics here. Cool, so, so far so good. I got the crowdsource, the bat setup, great. So what I can do here is use this simulate shelf tool and just set uh, the, the animations that I want for, uh, for this example. So I won't load my rest position uh, inside the DOP. Uh, I mean, I like to have it just in case I need to, to debug something, but I'll take these two here with control and press accept. I don't need the ragdoll, so if, uh, if you're more into uh, bipeds and everything and have the ragdoll options, that's all, you need to all set this up uh, within the agent definition. But for now, flying agents will be good with these uh, two cycles, press accept. And now it creates the dots with all, all the required nodes. And I mean, it, it, it is a quite complex graph. And this part here is not, uh, uh, not essential for what we're doing now. That's uh, for the, the, the ragdoll constraint, so I'll get rid of this. And uh, it's using also a, a, a multi-solver because it's using the, the bullet RBD solver and there's a static solver. So I'll just get rid of all of this for now. Don't need a gravity either. So I'm just simplifying all of this. And just make sure that when you, you clean this up, or you could have set it up yourself. I mean, basically what we need here is a crowd solver, a crowd source, which is in fact a pop source. Uh, so we'll see that agents behave more or less like particles. So that's great. If you're used to just uh, play with particles, you'll be pretty good with, uh, with crowds as well. Uh, so like I said, crowd solver, crowd source, and crowd states. So the crowd states are the animation clips that we're loading into uh, the DOP network. So that should be just enough. So I'll get rid of the multi-solver as well and just make sure to wire your crowd object inside the crowd solver. Lay this down and let's just press play. So the first frame takes maybe a couple of seconds and then it plays back. So the default behavior here is that uh, agents try to avoid each other so that's why they're flying away from each other. And all of this is uh, set up in the crowd solver. So avoidance is here. Uh, we can change the size of the, the collision geometry or the collision size here. Uh, it's definitely too large for our little bats here. So I'll change the size scale here. I oh, know that's the fourth scale. Particle scale multiplier right there. So this should be enough and we'll We'll just take a look at some, uh, some crowd or some forces that could be used with crowds. So all of these forces, forces that are designed for crowds are called pop steer. And these usually have two different uh, output attributes. So either pop force, and it'll behave pretty much like the, the forces that you use to use with uh, particles, or you can use crowd steer force. So there are, those are more subtle. Uh, they, take some time, uh, they take more time to really uh, act on the crowds. And it's, uh, it's uh, updating the force attribute. So it's not really updating the velocity itself. So it's like telling the, 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 the crowd agent to move over time. So it, it makes for smoother, uh, smoother animation. And that should be great. A problem for, uh, for flying agents by default is that the crowd solver is, is designed just by default uh, to handle agents on the ground. So everything is like 2D. All the forces are set up to, uh, to move the agent on a 2D plane. So what we want to do here is under uh, the, the crowd solver particle, uh, particle motion here, we'll just uncheck project forces here. So here it says, if enable forces, the forces will be projected into the plane, but we don't have a plane defined. So if I leave this checked here, and play it back, we can see that a certain, uh, a certain bat stays at the, same, at the same level, right? But if I uncheck it and maybe set up the avoidance back to what it was, or no, it was not even that large, something like this, we should see bats moving upwards and downwards. So that's more what we want for our flying agents. Great. 
So I'll quickly load a, another uh, file here. So da, 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 da. the forces, and just take a look at a few forces uh, before the, the Q&A for this part. Great. So I've set up this, uh, uh, these tubes. And uh, what I want is uh, I want my agents to try to avoid all of these. So uh, these are the, the different forces that I've set up. I just mute all of these and take a look at avoid obstacle. So here we just need to load a, a sub path. And it tries to, what it tries to do is probably just um, projecting rays and trying to see what's in front of the agents and then apply forces to avoid whatever is in front of the agents. But like I said earlier, uh, it's made uh, for 2D agents or uh, agents that are moving on the 2D plane. Uh, so the, uh, the vertical FOV is uh, set to one by default. But if we want our, uh, our agents to look downward and upward to avoid obstacle, it's good to increase this value. Uh, to something similar than the horizontal FOV, and just playing this back again, the first the first few uh, the first frame takes a few seconds, but then we can see that our that our bats are trying to avoid the uh, the tubes like this, and it it creates a decent motion. I mean, we can see them uh, not really clustering or flocking, but at least they're avoiding the uh, the tubes. And then I got a couple of other uh, forces that I like to use. So the pop steer here, uh, or it's called the wonder, it pretty much works like a pop force. Uh, in fact, if you set it to pop force, it's pretty much like a wind, a pop wind. Uh, this will just add some noise to our, our motion. This one I like, uh, the, the steer seek. I think it's pretty much like the target, or I can't remember which one, but uh, what I like to do with this one is set it up to a certain number of particles. So let's just get this one here. So position will will attract. Uh, I think it's called pop attract. So it, it will attract all the the, the agents uh, on one certain point. And then if we select particles, what it'll try to do is select some of the agents as uh, as as groups, and then they'll try to uh, to circle around uh, the average position of a certain group. So if I disable these here, we'll probably be able to to see this motion. So we can see that they are clustering to groups, and they are trying to uh, avoid the, each other, then come back. So we would see these five groups forming over time. So by mixing this with the noise, the steer uh, obstacle and the go to location. So go to location here is pretty much the same thing. It's, so it's a seek, but I'm, I'm asking all the agents to move to a certain location. So all of this should make them move through this forest of tubes while avoiding, while adding some noise, while trying to cluster them into groups. And what I like to add here is just a little pop wrangle. What I did is uh, once an agent is below a certain threshold, it adds a, uh, a, um, a force in the positive y direction just so they could avoid the, the ground. Uh, you could have any other strategies that you're used to use with uh, particles. I mean, it should work. And uh, I just found that using a force like this uh, would give me a smoother motion. And if, uh, if anything, you can then add back all of this uh, rigid, uh, rigid body dynamics that were that was present there, but this is, I think, a lightweight uh, alternative to all of this. Cool, so we're ready for a second Q&A. So if anything, uh, anyone has a, a question, we got the, the little cube right there. Yeah. Hi. Uh does it need to work with a rig or can it work with like an animation cache, like a point cache? Okay, so the, the point of using the, um, uh, the crowd system is really that you can then blend from an animation to another one. So here we have a simple setup that we could have made just with 
particles and then copying an alembic file. But here we could add some logic and then transition from uh, one, one animation to another one. If we're using point caches, let's pretend that uh, our, our, crowd, uh, our crowd agent has uh, its wings uh, flipped like this. Uh, then if we, uh, I would like to, uh, to blend from one state to another, it would probably just do a point interpolation, so a linear interpolation between two states. Uh, here the idea is that it'll move the, um, the actual bones, so we'll get a, a proper deformation of the whole rig. Uh, but you could you could do it with uh, with just particles and uh, pack uh, pack primitive or animation. But it's, this is really uh, lightweight and should let you blend animations. So that's really the strength. So you didn't show changing states between right. fast and slow. Is that so? For for yeah. all of this, you, you would need to add uh, some logic operators uh, that would be connected here into transitions. So transition uh, could be. Um, triggered by any, anything, let's say a particle getting into a bounding box, uh, then this should trigger a, a, a transition from one uh, animation clip to another. Great, so we'll start the third part in about two minutes.